How's it going everybody? In this video, I wanna talk about what is likely going to be a game-changing decision by the Supreme Court in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Corlett, New York carry permit case. So let's talk about this. But real quick before I jump into this video, if you think it's time for the Supreme Court to once again uphold our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I wanna thank one of the new sponsors of this channel, which is KAK. KAK is a high volume precision machine shop producing over a half a million components every single month. So next time you're putting together an AR build, head on over to the KAK industry website where they will sell you everything but the lower for your build. Also, go ahead and use the code armscholar10 for 10% off of your order. So once again, thank you KAK for sponsoring this video. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I wanna talk about what is likely going to be the game-changing decision in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Corlett case. Uh, this decision by the Supreme Court is likely going to have huge implications and impacts nationwide. And since I put out my last video talking about the amicus brief that was filed by various senators and house reps, a lot of you guys were asking me, what impacts could this decision actually have? So as some quick background on the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Corlett case, this essentially is a challenge to the state of New York's permit requirements. The state of New York actually has a May issue permitting scheme, making it so that any of these officials are not obligated or required to actually issue concealed carry permits to individuals who are applying for them. And actually even more so in the state of New York, one of the basis is used a lot of the times in other states to actually try to receive a permit being self-defense is not accepted. That's also similar to areas like in the state of California. There are various localities that will not actually grant CCW permits if someone puts, I only want it for self-defense. A lot of times in the state of California and for example, in the state of New York as well, you have to prove something more than just self-defense. Well, this case is a challenge to that. And specifically, when you look at the question presented to the Supreme Court and what they actually granted cert on this case for, the question is whether the state of New York's denial of petitioners' applications for concealed carry licenses for self-defense violated the Second Amendment. So that is what the Supreme Court is going to be addressing in this issue. Now, the reason why you're seeing so many amicus briefs filed and the reason why you're hearing so many people excited about this case is because it is a big case and it's going to have big implications. So let's talk about some of those implications that I think we can gather from right now that this case will have. One of the first big impacts that this case will have is really the historical impact. So for quick reference, when I was in law school, one of the standard courses you have to take is constitutional law. And under constitutional law in those classes you go through, you cover various different constitutional issues, amendments, etc. And when it came to the Second Amendment, you actually only covered two cases being the Heller and McDonald case, and you only actually ever spent a half day looking at those cases. And that is really because the only major two-A Supreme Court cases we have as of right now is the Heller and McDonald case, which is really sad when you think about it because at the highest level of our courts, the Second Amendment has not been heavily looked into and analyzed and actually decided on. Instead, a lower court states the federal government have been allowed to run amok and infringe on our Second Amendment rights. In contrast, when it comes to other issues like the First Amendment, you actually have whole independent classes that you can take for an entire semester looking at the various Supreme Court decisions and implications of those decisions. I actually took a whole First Amendment course that was a whole semester looking at all these different First Amendment issues and Supreme Court cases. So you can see just how much different the treatment of these amendments has been by the Supreme Court. Well, now you're gonna have the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case. And what's gonna happen is now, this case is going to be in every single law school's uh, book when it comes to constitutional law, and every single uh, individual is gonna have to analyze and look at this case and the impacts that this case has. So at its most basic level, this case is going to have huge historical impacts when it comes to this area of law. The next impact that this case will have is directly on carry laws. Uh, specifically, when you look at states like the state of New York, this is directly going to impact their carry permit laws, but also other states that have similar laws as well. For example, those may issue states that we talk about a lot, like the state of California, Connecticut, Delaware, DC, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York, all those are may issue states, which if this decision goes the way of Second Amendment rights, it could directly impact those states that have may issue language. Because essentially any decision by this Supreme Court striking at this issue of may issue laws or denials based on self-defense will actually impact those states as well. And one thing I wanna note here, which a lot of people were asking me about, has to do with the actual structure of the Supreme Court. 
Um, a lot of people were saying, well, what happens if the Supreme Court decides in the favor of the Second Amendment? Will this impact states? Will it impact federal laws, circuit courts, etc.? When it comes to the Supreme Court decisions, Supreme Court decisions are the primary binding precedent on all lower courts, including federal and state courts. So based on the decision that the Supreme Court gives here in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Corlett, this case will directly impact all laws across the U.S. So that is why if the Supreme Court strikes down the New York State may issue laws or actually finds that self-defense is a proper justification for someone to be issued a carry permit, that's why this would have huge implications for other states as well. Essentially, there would be binding language and binding precedent across the U.S. to point to to say, hey, this state, this locality, etc., should issue a permit if someone simply just says, I want to carry a handgun or whatever for my own self-defense. So not only will this case have historical impact, but it will have direct impact on the state of New York and other states that have may issue laws. But also, like I've kind of already mentioned, this decision by the Supreme Court will also be binding precedent, which is huge. So when it comes to Supreme Court decisions, Supreme Court decisions are binding precedent on all federal lower courts as well as state courts. That means that the lower courts must follow what the Supreme Court says in their decision. This doesn't mean that they always do, however. So for example, what we've seen recently is many lower courts in the federal systems and state systems have applied tiered scrutiny when it comes to Second Amendment analysis, which essentially balances the constitutional right at question here, the Second Amendment, with the government's claimed governmental interests. So for example, they balance um, the right to have magazines that hold more than 10 rounds versus the public interest of stopping mass shootings, which like the state of California alleges. They balance those issues, and a lot of these lower courts use this balancing test, this tiered scrutiny, when they look at Second Amendment issues. However, the Heller case actually set out a completely different standard when it came to analyzing Second Amendment issues. That analysis standard being categorical scrutiny. So when it comes to this analysis, you look at the text first by itself. And then you determine the scope of that text by looking at the original public meaning of that text as informed by history and tradition. So sometimes you'll hear people say the proper standard is text, history, and tradition, when really when you look at what Scalia wrote, it's text as informed by history and tradition. So that's the proper analysis, and that analysis has been outlined by the Supreme Court but you have a lot of lower courts just refusing to use that type of analysis. So one thing that could likely come out of this case by the Supreme Court would be affirming the correct type of analysis. And once again, saying this is the appropriate type of analysis, text as informed by history and tradition. And they could also potentially tell all lower courts that they've been using this balancing test and it's been improper for them to use this balancing test and to correct it going forward. If this happens, that then opens up a huge door for nationwide challenges. This opens up state challenges as well as federal challenges, and it opens up a whole lot of other issues that can be readdressed. For example, a lot of the improper decisions by the Ninth Circuit and improper decisions when it comes to California laws. So reaffirming the proper type of analysis that should be applied when you look at the Second Amendment could really have huge implications in helping us go back and fight again for Second Amendment rights and doing the right type of analysis when it comes to these cases. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm. It helps to signal to YouTube that you guys see value in these types of videos and in this type of two-way news, and then it pushes it to more individuals. So even if you don't wanna leave a comment, just commenting down below, hey, I'm just commenting to fuel the algorithm, or some people say I'm commenting to fuel Al Gore's rhythm, I really appreciate that. It really does help the video. As you guys can see that YouTube is definitely pushing my videos more because of you guys. And so if you go ahead and drop a comment down below, I will really appreciate that. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never get this nation with built by arm scholars and stationally maintained by arm scholars.